Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm going to move my website, webtng.com, from using the Astra theme and the Elementor page builder to using the new Cadence theme and Gutenberg with no page builder. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm going to share my thinking about the process. I'm going to show you what worked, what didn't work, and after watching the video, you can go to my website and check out the final result. You may be wondering, why am I going through this process? Why am I switching away from Elementor and Astra to using Gutenberg and Cadence? And trust me, during this process, I asked myself the same question more than once. <laughs> I didn't just wake up one day and say, Let's redo the website. It's been more than two years since the last time I did any major changes. And for the past few months, I've been thinking about the kinds of things I can do to keep the site up to date. Whenever you do a website audit, you find some things that maybe are there that aren't being used and need to be cleaned up. And maybe you get some ideas for ways to do things better and more efficiently. First off, let me say that Elementor is a great page builder. It's powerful and it's easy, and I'm using it extensively on several of my sites. However, I realized on webtng.com, I don't really need it. I'm only using Elementor for two things. First off, I'm using it for the contact form, for the Contact Us page. This contact form is created in Elementor, Elementor free, as a contact form widget, it's really quick and easy to use. Okay, so that was the first use of Elementor, and you don't really need a page builder for a contact form. Okay, the second thing that I'm using Elementor for is Elementor Pro has the theme builder, and I created a single post template using the Elementor theme builder. Okay, and what that gives me is a few things. First, I use the social share icons. Second, I use the table of contents because some of my posts tend to get pretty long and so having a table of contents is nice. And then I'm also using it for the post navigation because it's nice, it shows the name of the previous and next pages. And I have an accordion here that has the uh, affiliate disclosure. Okay, so I've created a template so that I can include those four items automatically for every post. But I'm wondering, can I get close to this just with other things that I already have installed? So let's look at what I do have installed. These are the plugins that I have installed now that are going to come into play in this process. I'm using the Astra theme and I have the Astra Pro plugin installed. I have the Central Color Palette plugin installed, and I did a video on this if you're interested. It's great, okay, because it coordinates the colors between the Customizer, Elementor, and Gutenberg. So I can set the color palette there once, and it's available in all three places. Then I've got Elementor and Elementor Pro and Power Pack Pro for Elementor. These five plugins are going to go away. And then I've got tool set types for my custom post types and tool set blocks for creating content templates and ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, which I was hopeful I could use the ultimate add-ons blocks in my templates to get some of the functionality that I had with a template created with Elementor Pro. On the theme side, I'm using Astra. Astra is the theme with the most active installs on WordPress.org. So why do I want to switch away from Astra? Well, because I decided if I'm doing away with Elementor, I'm going to go all in on Gutenberg. Like Astra, the Cadence theme is lightweight and fast. Okay, but recently I did a test where I looked at a bunch of the most popular general purpose page builder themes, and Cadence was one of the ones that supported Gutenberg the best. So the first step is to replace the contact page. Let's go there and edit it. We see that it's an Elementor page, but we're going to click to go back to the WordPress editor. And I'm just going to convert that to a regular block. Okay, and save that. 
So now we don't have a contact form. A lot of people use contact form 7 and I've used this before. It's extremely popular. Fairly easy to use. But one problem I have with it is it doesn't save the contacts in the database by default. And as a result, and it's possible you could lose an email. So usually when I use contact form 7, I also use the Flamingo add-on to contact form 7, which does just that, saves the submissions into the database. So that's two plugins. They're fairly easy to use, but lately I've been using Fluent Forms, and I've been really impressed with the team and with the flexibility. So I decided I would use the free version of Fluent Forms for creating the contact form. There is a pro version, but I don't need it at this time on this site. So I'm just going to go with the free version. So I'm going to go here and install it and activate it. And then when we go to look at it for the first time, then we see this wizard here to create a first form. The free version comes with a few pre-made templates. Some of these, I think, are probably pro features, but the contact form is free. So I'm just going to go with this template to get a quick start. You click here to change the name. So I'm just going to remove the word demo. And then you see the red asterisk indicates that it's a required field. I'm just going to make all of the fields required. And then I want to add recaptcha to cut down on spam submissions. And we see that's not available and it says to enter the API key first. So I'm going to save the form and we'll go to, I'll go to the settings, recaptcha, and I'm going to enter the keys there. Okay, so I've entered the keys and they've been validated. I'm going to go back to my form and let's change the text here on the form. And I'm going to go for a custom button style so that I can make this button look kind of like the other buttons on the site. So I'll set the background color to white, the text color to the site color blue and the border color to that same blue and then reverse those for the hover state the background will be blue and the text color will be white and the border color will be that blue still so that looks kind of like the buttons on the site and i'm going to save that and next go to the settings and i'll have it reset the form after submission and I'll make it so you can't submit an empty form because that doesn't help anything and save the settings and then I'll go to the email notifications and I'll enable the notification for the admin and let's edit that and we'll say contact form just to make it a little clearer what the email is for when it shows up in my inbox. So I'll save that. And now let's add our form. And Fluent Forms has a block where we can pick our form. We update that. And now let's go view the page. OK, so we have our form. So that part has been replaced. Now let's replace the single post template. Okay, I've disabled the Elementor related plugins and now let's see if we can replace that Elementor template with a toolset template. So I'll click Add New, give it a name, sign it to Posts. So here we have a place where we can pick the page that is being previewed and it's for Posts. It's not for archives, it's not for taxonomies. We don't need the editors. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use the featured image in post meta and post title from the theme. And I'm going to start here by adding our social share buttons. And you see, I actually have three options. I have the WordPress social icons, the ultimate add-ons icons, and Toolset has some as well. Not surprisingly, the Ultimate Add-ons has a lot more social network support, and they also allow you to customize the colors and whatnot of the icons, whereas the built-in WordPress and the Toolset version use the colors and logos from the social network. So I'm going to try the Ultimate Add-ons version. And so that's Facebook. We'll go for the icon color of blue to match our site. Then we'll add Twitter and we'll add Pinterest and we'll add LinkedIn. Okay, so there's my social networks. Next, I want to add the table of contents widget from Ultimate Add-ons. Then next, I want to add the post content, which is use a tool set block to pull that in, the content body. There we go. And now, and now at the bottom, I want to add the accordion with the affiliate message. And Ultimate Add-ons has this FAQ schema, which is actually a, a type of accordion. So I'm going to use that. I only need one of these accordions there. So we'll just change this to, and then I'll paste in my affiliate disclosure message. Okay, let's see. We'll change the icon here for the first to be this information icon. And we'll change the other one to be an arrow. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to update this and then we'll go look and see how things look on the front end. So let's go to the front. We'll look at one of the articles. Uh-oh. This doesn't look correct. And we don't have a table of contents. And if we look at the bottom, did our, it looks like our accordion didn't work either. So I went to the Toolset website and checked, and there is an issue here. You should be able to use other blocks for static content in your content template, other non-Toolset blocks. So I think they're working on a fix. But at this point, I'm going to have to wait on that fix, and let's see what we can do instead. I guess I will remove this block. And instead, I'll use the tool set version. Maybe that will work. And let's see, what else do I need? I need um, Pinterest here. And then I'm going to have to take this out. There is a plugin for adding a table of contents. It'll just automatically put it before the first heading. So if Toolset doesn't come through, if it's not possible to use the ultimate add-ons table of contents, I might have to use that. But in the meantime, I guess I'm going to go with, let's see, I think I also need to use this here to delete the parent block. Okay, I'm going to update and let's go take a look. Okay, so that's what I've got. This is coming from my theme and my theme also has the option for previous and next posts, but it doesn't, it's not quite as nice because it doesn't have the name of the previous and next article, but that's what I can do for now. And Toolset has a fix, then I'll come back and try adding those other elements back in. So the next step is to replace the Astra theme. And the way I'm going to do that is I've made a copy of the website so far using all-in-one WP migration, and I've installed it on a local development site. 
And while the previous steps were pretty fast, I'm worried that customizing the theme and getting it to look similar to the current layout and look will take time and might be disruptive. So I'm gonna do it on a local site first. And what I found in testing is that there's a plugin created by the Beaver Builder team called Customizer Export and Import. And I tested that out and it works well with Cadence. So I can do the theme customizations on my test site, export them, and then import them onto WebTNG. Switch themes on WebTNG and then import them. So that's what I'm gonna do. I went to the Cadence website and here you can download the Cadence theme, it's free. They are going to have a pro version, which will add more features, but the free version covers everything I need at this point. And I'm also going to download the child theme. And here they have a child theme for Cadence you can download. So back on my demo site, I'm going to go to themes. Here's the Cadence theme. Here's the Cadence child. I switched in my own graphic and I'm going to activate this. And let's go take a look at what we've got. This is what it looks like quite a bit different than before. So let's see what I can do here to make it look similar to the previous site. If we go to the customizer, we can see that there are several categories. There's general, header, footer, page layout, blog posts, custom post types, which is nice. The same thing you can do for blog posts, you can do for custom post types. So just real quick, I'm not gonna really do this now, but these are my custom post types and you can see you can create a layout for those. And then you have the standard WordPress, menus, widgets, homepage settings, and additional CSS. The first thing I usually do is get the color palette. Cadence comes with this different type of color palette and there's an article here where it explains the logic behind it. But basically this is the accent color and this is the secondary accent color. For example, when you hover over a button or something, then these are your colors that you would use, say for your fonts and maybe some backgrounds, I don't know. And then these are your other colors. And so these kind of light grays might be background like this. See, it's using this color here. And the idea is if you create a palette with those ideas in mind, the theme is going to, by default, apply those in certain places in a way that makes sense. And you can override them. You know, you see here has this little globe icon on it to show you using one of your global colors. This color palette is picked up in Gutenberg. So I'm not going to need the central color palette plugin anymore after I do this. So what I did is I created a color palette to use here. All right, so I've copied my colors in to these and my color palette is all blue, matches my logo and whatnot. So you can see this is the dark kind of blue and that's here for the headline and you hover over it and you get this lighter blue. So now I'm going to save this and I'm going to go and take a look at the layout. This is a little wider by default. I think my previous theme, I, I think before I was using 1200, but I'm gonna stick with this. Monitors are always getting bigger. And for sidebar, I think I'll give it a sidebar width of 25%. And maybe I'll come back to this and see if we need to do some design changes. For buttons, where we start with a blue background and then we switch to a white background. And we start with a white background and switch to a blue background. And we have a border color of blue in both cases. And then we have a solid one pixel border and a border radius of four. So we'll go with that for our buttons, publish that. 
I'm not going to change the typography right now. I, I might do that later. I'm going to enable scroll to top, publish that. I can come back and change the design of that later if I need to. I'm going to take a quick look at the social links. Here you can enter the link to your social networks and then the buttons will use those. These are the buttons I created before using Font Awesome. It looks like I might be able to get rid of Font Awesome, the Font Awesome plugin also. So I'm going to pause the video and copy the URL links for these into here and I'll be right back. Okay, so I entered those for my social networks. I'm gonna save that. Now I think I'm ready to try customizing this header. So let's go to the header and for logo, I'll select my logo, skip cropping. Then I don't need the title in there. I've got that already. So there's the logo. It picked up my favicon from before. Then let's go back to primary navigation. I'm going to need to select the menu that I used for here, which isn't the social menu. I think it's actually called slider. Uh, this home icon is coming from Font Awesome also, so I might have to keep Font Awesome until I, I might need to figure out how to replace that home icon. I'll see if I can do that. Secondary menu is social. That's actually for the secondary menu, I'll set it to select because I'm going to go back in the, into the header builder. For this row, if you don't put anything in the row, then it doesn't show it. So for this row, I'm going to click this little cog here and go to design. And I'm going to change the row background to be the same as the page background, which I think is this one. Nope, this one. So we'll give a border on the bottom of one pixel. We'll use, I guess, this blue color. But let's fade it down here. Okay, and then on this top bar, I'd like to have a top bar. And the top bar, I am going to, let's go back here, and I want to add the built-in social here. It's only showing three of the icons. I'll have to look and see why that is. See what we've got here, okay. So we'll need to add Pinterest and YouTube and GitHub. Where is GitHub? And LinkedIn. I don't have an Instagram right now for this. So it's nice that you can reorder these. So there's that. That looks pretty good. Next, let's see what we've got for design. I think I'm going to need to come back to this in a minute because let's go to the top row design. And I'd like to make that blue. That's kind of what I had on my previous site. And I like that fine. Okay, now let's go back to the social icons. And let's see if we can tweak the color here. I think I want the background color to be blue. And when you hover, then maybe have it be this color. And for the color, I think I want it to be white. All right, so there's our top bar. I'm going to save now for the header. Let's see, I think we need to change the color of these, the navigation here. So I'll go to here and change the colors. The initial color will be blue. The hover color can be our secondary accent and then the selected one can also be that. Okay, so there's our top bar. Now let's see if we can go to the next thing and let's go to the footer. So on the copyright, I'm just going to replace this with my own version. I'll get rid of these underlines in a minute and then Let's change the padding to be less and let's enable a 
border on top. We'll do the same thing as we did before. So that's good. This is the wrong color here. Let's scroll to top. I publish that. Then I think that was the scroll to top was in here. Let's see if we can change the colors there of that scroll to top. We'll just make it our blue. In case you haven't noticed, blue is my favorite color. And when you hover over it, I guess we'll do this alternate blue. Okay, publish that. Now I think the last thing we have to do now is the, the layouts for the blog posts. Let's look at the archive first. So I don't want the archive title and I'd like to have a sidebar and like two columns on desktop and the box is fine. Now a nice thing it has here is you can click the eye to turn things on and off and then when it has a down arrow there are more options here so I'm going to do inherit to accommodate the size of my featured images and then I'm fine with the rest of this let's see for the meta I'd like to show the comments for some reason those aren't showing I'm gonna have to post in the support forum there on that but I think everything else is looking okay so I'm gonna publish this and then go look at the single let's go to one don't like this layout very much that's kind of interesting. I think I'll go with that. And minimum container height. I think I need a little more padding on the top. And do we want breadcrumbs? And then let's see what we can do here. For meta, I want comments again. Okay. And then I do want a sidebar. And then I think I will stay with boxed. And I will inherit the featured image size. And then I'll make the featured image above. And there we go. Let's look at the bottom here. Cadence does not only have the previous next navigation, but it does also shows us the title of the previous and next. So that's nice. I've gained that back using the Cadence theme. That's something I lost from Elementor template. And it's got the similar posts, which I'll keep. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. I'm going to publish that. Then let's go take a look at a page just to see what that looks like. And I think there's a page layout option here. I guess I'm kind of a sidebar kind of guy. All right, so let's see how I add a sidebar here. And that's fine. So I'm going to publish that. And now let's do a little cleanup. Let's go back to the home page. This is a little, got a little extra space there. I looked around, I couldn't find a way to, in the customizer, to scoot that up. So I'm just gonna add a snippet to do that. Then let's see, the tag cloud looks kind of funny, awkward. So I created a snippet of CSS for that. Looks a little better. Could probably tweak that some more. But for now, that's good. And then I wanted to get rid of these links by default here. So I created a snippet for that. That's good. Now I've got an odd number of articles here. So let's see if we can fix that. We have to go to the settings page in the admin for that. And I'm just going to make this a odd number. There, I adjusted it so that we don't have an odd number. All right, so the next step is to take this live to webtng.com from the staging site. Okay, I've downloaded and activated the customizer import export plugin. So I'm going to go back to the customizer and we see we have this new menu here. 
So I'm on the local testing site. I'm going to export the file. And now I'm going to go to the WebTNG website. So here I am on the WebTNG website, the live site. I just took a backup, which you can see right here. And I installed and activated the customizer import export plugin from the Beaver Builder team. If we go and look at the themes installed, you can see I've still got Astra installed. I don't have Cadence and the Cadence Child theme yet. So let's add those. Okay, here's the Cadence and the Cadence Child. I'm going to activate it. Go to my website. You can see everything screwed up. <laughs> Styling hasn't been applied. Here's the import export. And I am now going to import. And voila! All of the theme customizer changes have been applied. I see a little funny thing here that didn't get done. Looks like the custom CSS didn't get copied over. So let's go into the customizer. So let's go in, we'll add our CSS snippets and save that. So that's looking good. And so we're done. In summary and conclusion, I think that sometimes we turn to our toolkit without thinking. For example, I installed Elementor, Elementor Pro, and PowerPack Elements as part of my stack when they weren't really needed. Also, I think we need to periodically do an audit of our sites because over time there are new solutions that present themselves. For example, Gutenberg is getting better and toolset blocks provide a way to integrate dynamic content with the WordPress editor. In the video, I switched out Elementor by replacing the Elementor contact form with a Fluent Forms version. And I also replaced the single post template created in Elementor for a tool set single post template. In that process, I lost some functionality, which I'm hoping I can add back in. Speaking of tool set, I was a bit disappointed to find there are still some rough edges. Toolset support responded that the developers are looking into the problem. However, that leaves me with more work to do on the single post template in the future. I also replaced Astro Pro with a free Cadence theme. Cadence covered all of the things I needed. It worked great with Gutenberg, and overall working with the theme was enjoyable. There was a small issue when the comments didn't show in the blog archive, which I've posted about in their forum. And I'm not sure if that was a user error or a small bug, but I'll find out and I'm sure that'll be taken care of. Overall, in the process, I had hoped to remove five plugins, but I ended up removing six. I removed the Astra Pro plugin, Central Color Palette, Elementor, Elementor Pro, the Font Awesome plugin, and Power Pack Elements. I added in one plugin for the contact form, Fluent Forms, the free version. Keep in mind, if you're thinking of changing themes or page builders, take a look at their advanced features to make sure that the theme or builder you're moving to has the features you need covered. For example, the Astra theme has a really nice custom layout feature, which the free version of Cadence doesn't support. I wasn't using that feature, so it wasn't an issue for me. Well, that's it for this video. There's a text version on the webtng.com website, along with other articles and resources. I hope that you found the video helpful. Thank you for watching.